Welcome to part three of session 24 on beams. In this portion, we're going to discuss how you would likely solve beam bending problems as an engineer. And so we're not going to derive these equations every time. We're going to be able to use either simulation tools or tables to be able to solve common geometries. And if we're fortunate, we'll hopefully be able to do both if we have more complex geometries. So what are we talking about when we say tables? Well, there are numerous sources on the internet that have tables that describe the bending moment and the shear force and the displacement okay, across a beam for a given set of loadings. So this beam that we have here is, is one that we've, we've looked at already, okay? And in the prior sections, I actually flipped things around so that they would use the same convention or that was using the convention that we've been, been using. Um, and, and that's something that you'll see as you go through the internet, that uh, you know there may be different conventions being used, so you have to be very careful. I mean, Q is what we call V, this W is what we call little v for displacement, for example. And then things are flipped, okay? As uh, like both, both the moments and the shear forces are flipped from the way we normally draw them, okay? But nonetheless, uh, these sources are available. Uh, Rourke's uh, Tables or Formulas, all right? This is kind of a famous book, compilation, um, that is... Um, been around for for decades okay um, is is a resource that that people used before the internet and I think they have a recent edition actually that came out so they're, they're still they're still putting this stuff out there and it's still a very reliable source here's another table okay for a different kind of configuration and when, you know when I say uh, we use these tables what I'm getting at is okay if you want to know deflection at a given location along the beam, right, you can plug in x equals something, all right, in here. Um, if we want to know the kind of where the maximum deflection is, right, we can look um, to these equations here as well. And um, it, it's it's very nice, but these are very simple cases, right? And and this is also, you know, as as you know, this is um, for a situation where uh, we're using kind of long slender beams and um, we're using small deflections, as we've discussed previously. Here's another situation, cantilevered with a, with a force on the end, cantilevered with a distributed force on the end. Okay, so this information is out there and is very useful, okay, and builds on what, we, what we've just been discussing essentially through the entire semester and is, is what you might use as an engineer. Now, hopefully, what you'll also do for more complex geometries is use simulation tools like PrepoMax, which we've discussed previously. And PrepoMax is one of many uh, available packages. Okay, And the basic idea I suggest, and others do too, is you go in baby steps. You start with a simple geometry that you have an analytical solution, for which you have an analytical solution. And then you can go to more complex systems. So, um, in this case, right, this is a situation where we actually have a cantilevered beam with a fixed end and a uh, point load on the end or, or a force on the end. Now, you, it's probably hard to see that because it's so small. But what essentially it is, is, is this situation, right? There's a, a force being applied at the end and it's, it's fixed on this end. And so you can do this in simulation and you can do it uh, analytically and you hope that you get the same result. And so that's what we're going to try to do right now. Okay, We're going to use FreeCAD. Now, you remember we've used FreeCAD in the past just to create the geometry that we the, that we could put into PrepoMax. But this time I thought, well, and also due to time constraints and everything else, and simplicity, we just use FreeCAD straight out of the box and be able to kind of do this this simple finite element analysis. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that Prepo Max does, but it does do a nice job and it's pretty pretty quick. Okay, we'll see if I can do it quickly here. So let's let's get started here. And um, 
uh, again, cantilever beam point uh, load at the end. Here are the dimensions we're going to be using. Here's the force. Here's the elastic modulus that we're going to be using. And uh, here are some of the calculations that we um, uh, expect to have uh, shown in our results. So about minus 290 uh, micrometers in deflection. Okay. So, um, and, and this is going to be the same thing that you get to do for your, your question, okay, to, to finish off this assignment. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up FreeCAD. So you see here, okay, it opens. And the first thing we need to do is define the geometry. So we will go ahead and create new like we see here, move, or I clicked on that create new. Then you go to a part and we can bring this part in. The cube, sorry, we click on the cube and now we have the ability to put in a thousand meters for length, the width 200 millimeters. Sorry, did I say a thousand meters? I meant a thousand millimeters. And, um, 100 millimeters or 0.1 meter for the height. If you come over here, you can click on this object right here that says zoom to fit. And so now we see it like that. We go from the part interface, you could do it in the part design, but we'll go from the part interface to FEM. So we move over here, like you see there, and we now have the opportunity to um, create an analysis container. So we're gonna create the analysis container and then we will add a material to the object. Okay. And so this one right here, we're going to use aluminum all the way up at the top or close to it, aluminum generic. Young's modulus of 70 gigapascals. That sounds familiar, right? And they're using a Poisson ratio of 0.35. Often we use 0.33, but it's in that ballpark. And we'll hit OK. All right now we can move on in this direction. Um, here we can say that um, we're going to add um, a uh, constraint of a wall. Okay, so we're going to come over here and add this like that. So that's added like this, okay, like that. Hit OK. And um, then we will go ahead and also add a force on the end. So this one right here is force, constraint force. We'll do an add like that. And this will be, this is currently in the uh, normal axial direction. We wanna change that direction. So what you can do is you can click on this edge right here. Oops, I just wanna click on that. Yep, that edge. Nope, that's, yeah, that's edge. And I'm gonna do direction, like that. Okay, now it's moving up. I'm gonna change it to 1,000. Oops, but I actually want to um, change that direction. So I'm gonna reverse direction. So it's moving, it's pushing downward, okay? Like what we expect for this particular problem, okay. So now, um, and click here on the cube, and we're gonna add a mesh, okay? And here, uh, we're gonna make it very fine, and we're gonna drop the maximum size element down to 20, okay? And we're gonna apply, hit okay. So I think now we should be, this is a good little check, should be able to, Come over here, um, we click on the solver, it was thinking, and click over here from that solver, okay, to run the calculations. So we do this, and we wait. Hopefully not too long. 
Okay, it's thinking at the bottom. Actually, you can't see that, I guess, but it is thinking. Okay, it looks like it may be still thinking. All right, great. And now this comes up, CCX results. So we can click on this and we can see a few different things. Okay. One is, let's first take a look at displacement. What did we say that we were dealing with before? We were dealing with a system that would have displacement of minus 290 micrometers. Okay, so what did, what did FreeCAD tell us? Or Calculix through FreeCAD? Look at this, minus 0.28 millimeters. That's awesome, all right? It's very close, all right? You said um, minus 276, minus 0.28, all right? That's, uh, that's right on, okay? Or, you know, this is a minus 280 microns. Um, so uh, other things that we can take a look at and, and see are displacement and Y, all right? So Y is uh, in and out, all right, of the plane, not a whole lot, okay? One micron versus uh, minus 290. Okay, X, um, there is some, okay? X direction is, um, is this direction. I know you can't see this icon, it's too small, but X is in this direction. There's a little bit of uh, displacement, okay, in that direction as it's, as it's causing a bending to come down, right? We can also take a look at things like maximum shear stress, right? So Tresca, or we can take a look at things like the von Mises stress, right? Which we've talked about previously, okay? So this gives you um, kind of the tools to be able to go ahead and um, do the baby step, be able to run a simple geometry, okay, through the analytical result, and then run it through uh, finite element analysis. So to kind of conclude, uh, this is, well, this is the problem you have. We have gone through uh, derivations for calculating deflection. We've gone through the procedure for calculating deflection based on those derived equations, which are right here. And of course, we want to do those on the formula sheet. And then we've also talked about how one would likely do this as an engineer in the field. You know, open a table, open the internet, look up the, the forms for displacement that are available, and then uh, run those calculations. And if you get to a more advanced situation or, or component, then it makes sense to, um, to run some, and it makes sense to run some final element analysis. First, start with the baby step. Start with something that's simple or, or similar to, to what you can um, calculate analytically. And then you can go to more complex situations. All right. Thank you for watching. Okay. See you soon.